extra time that training before the meeting. So there might be some like movement here with other people coming in and stuff like that. Oh, no, I will. Um, I like hard starts and hard stops. So okay. we'll do a hard stop. At, at seven. seven. Yes. Okay, that sounds good. Oh, so we're fine. Um, we're recording. Okay. Lakeitha is my coworker, <laughs> is PJ and my coworker. Um, she is the prevention specialist as well as the housing advocate network manager. Um, so she has two different roles. The role that we asked her to come and talk about today was prevention, yes. to do an overview on prevention, and then also for us to like ask any questions that we have. So I'm just going to turn over to you. All right. Precisely as Rebecca stated, I'm the prevention specialist with the Housing Advocate Network in collaboration with um, the YWCA. And so what I would like to do is open up with two stories and um, this will be in context. So the first, um, we'll say the name is Lauren. Lauren was a single mom that came into our services at the time she was pregnant and had a toddler as well. She um, was exiting a DV situation and was staying with her friend who had a, um, a precarious occupation, we'll say. Um, and so I started working with Lauren um, regarding um, next steps, placements, um, what funding could look like and this type of thing. A point came where I met with her and there were some concerning things. There were men in, in and out of the house. There was some drug use, not by her, but by the um, by the friend. And the point came where I said, um, I may have to call, make a call to CPS. Mind you, she's also nine months pregnant and working a fairly minimum wage position. So she gives me this information. Um, incidentally, we do have some amount of funding available and um, blessedly, I have a lot of connections in this town, few phone calls, plus a check. Um, we were able to get a landlord to agree to take her in um, as in immediately, as in, I think it was a two day turnaround. Um, advocacy and case management occurred with her church who agreed to pay half the rent as long as the prevention program would pay the double deposit. Um, and so we moved forward in collaboration with River of Life a week later. A furniture set for her rooms and her kids were um, provided. So she had, through this program, um, housing stability, but it didn't end there due to the stability that was now in her home. She got promoted. And um, I just spoke with her not too long ago, the half that the church is paying for the case management advice I gave her is going into a bank account to be revisited in a year. So we might be looking at something like buying a manufactured home or something like that. And all of that was due to the work done, not by necessarily myself in the prevention program, but a community of people um, that responded well to the premise of the program and the advocacy on her behalf as well. So that's Lauren, second person, we'll call her Carlene. <laughs> and um, she was married. Um, and so they had um, three, three sons. She was working part-time because the husband had it. For whatever reason, he left in his wake. The rent actually had not been paid <laughs> for quite some time. And um, how we entered, how she entered our services was, I only make X amount a month. I don't know what to do. I now have a 30 day um, notice to vacate the premises. And I have the chaos of having three sons who are now fatherless and myself who now doesn't have a husband. Um, fast forward, we did some case management, further advocacy with this particular property manager. Um, they agreed to a six month payment plan. She didn't have the money through the funding of this program. We were able to pay the first program, which allowed her to gain uh, sufficient employment. 
mm -hmm. and um, get on the road toward keeping her housing. I spoke to her about two months ago and payment plan is going well. She's gainfully employed and the boys are doing well. Again, this is housing stability, which is a um, ripple effect. We often hear about zero um, uh, zero housing, which means um, no the eradic uh, eradication of homelessness completely. Um, a more realistic approach I find is housing first. If you have housing stability, you're able to then concentrate. Others can see it, maybe offer you a promotion because you're not all over the place. And so these are the things that have occurred through this program. So again, um, I'm the manager for the prevention program. What is the prevention program? And I'm gonna read a little bit just so I make sure I'm not missing anything. Um, but essentially it is um, intensive case management. The program provides um, limited funding at its inception when we first meet, or I guess when I first meet with a family, we're talking housing goals, we're building a relationship. Um, what do you want? Not everybody wants a house on the hill. Some people, you know, um, maintaining their housing is typically a goal. Um, we want to essentially prevent you from going into the YWCA. It's formally the diversion program to divert you from the Y. Um, and through entering our prevention program, success would mean you did not enter the YWCA as a consequence of whatever's going on in your life. Um, so a major question would be, what is the eligibility requirements? In order to enter the prevention program, you need to be eligible to enter the YWCA. And this is the part I will read. Number one, number three points, number one, a family must either identify as currently homeless or at imminent risk um, of houselessness as defined by facing eviction, lease termination, or otherwise losing their current place of living within seven to 10 days. So we're talking about an emergency situation um, that is most likely quite chaotic and ridden with high emotions. Um, number two, a family must meet additional eligibility requirements similar to those at the Family Housing Center, specifically, A, the family must include at least one dependent, um, anyone 17 years old and younger, B, have custody of that person, that dependent, at least 50% of the time, and three, they must be a resident of Missoula County for 60 days. So it can get a little, a, a, a little rocky there if someone's coming from billings and trying to be proactive. For that, we have um, other programs, but this program is specifically for that population. And to wrap it up, number three, um, the Family Houselessness Prevention Program will be capped at five families. I'm but one person, and we want to make sure that you do get that intensive case management. You do get the care. You do get my attention, advocacy, um, and and true diligence. Um, um, in short, um, you're served and loved well throughout this program. So we're capped at five families, and um, the requirement is that we meet in person once a week. I like to lay eyes on you, if for nothing else, just to gauge your stress level. It's one thing to keep everything's fine versus I'm seeing, <laughs> you know, that um, maybe, you know, the tensions might be higher than, than communicated and um, that type of thing. Um, also, again, we are building a relationship. I want you to come to our community meal and I I want to see your children. I want to delight in your child with you. Um, you know, um, read them a story. That's happened at one point recently. Uh, myself and the little girl, we picked out a bag of cookies for the police department, you know. Um, so just building bridges throughout the community as it is. And so how does the program work? Um, the point of entry is through the YWCA walk-in center. Um, 
It's you cannot pick up a, call, a phone and say, well, Keith, I have a family. You'll go in through the walk-in center and based on the criteria that I just mentioned, um, the walk-in center will determine eligibility. They will then call me where I'm most likely waiting and saying, hey, Lakeitha, I have a family, X, Y, Z, the rundown. Um, and then I will follow up either way. If I'm already at five families, I will still call them, ask them if they want to be put on a wait list. And then just to be gracious, I give them three action steps that they can act on immediately um, while they're waiting. Um, so I don't want to ever leave anybody hating just because you're not in, in the program. And so you have that information. Additional referrals can be made by the YWCA housing staff, but typically it does come through um, the walk-in center just because that's the, the, they're, they're who you see when you walk in, in the door. Um, families complete an intake with a prevention specialist to identify barriers, goals, and needs, and commit to meeting in person or by phone several times a week. I don't give my phone. <laughs> to the prevention families. So I'm available by text, email, phone. If you figure out how to train a pigeon, you can also communicate with me via pigeon mm -hmm. if you so choose. Um, my point is, is that I'm very accessible to you. What is pigeon? The pigeon, you train it to carry a note. note to me. It's a fantasy. Yeah. <laughs> they used to do it. They used to do it. Yeah. Yeah. I just thought it was like a yeah. different a, app. A cool app. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it is legitimate. Do you, want, do you want to take Pitching. the time to do it is the question. And will I respond? <laughs> you said you would. I said I would. I did. You heard it here. True enough. Uh, and so we have um, the families agree to time limited intensive case management that begins with a housing problem solving communication. Um, part of that initial conversation before doing the intake is to ensure that you understand this is a this is a commitment. We will be in contact. Um, we're not out here just cutting checks willy nilly. Um, you know, um, it that's not very helpful in the long run right. of things. Um, it, it, I am interested in short-term solutions for you, especially with our children, our concern, but also we need to be talking about budgeting, soft skills, um, community resources, such as partnership for free healthcare, the food bank for free food, heart church for free clothing, this type of thing are, are long-term solutions. Um, getting in good with your um, landlord, being friendly goes a super long way. Paying bills on time, this type of thing is uh, definitely a point of conversation. Number six, um, flexible funding is available to complement intensive case management that leads to the maintenance of securing long-term permanent housing. Um, they are accountable to uh, producing receipts and this type of thing um, prior, to, prior to reimbursement. So that's taken very seriously. Um, and I, I think that's that's a wonderful thing. We want we want to be practical in our solutions as well. And sometimes it it might be. Um, pay the first month's rent to get you to where you need to be going. Um, and so I will kind of leave it there for, for the, the training part and letting you know the what and the eligibility. And I would just like to wrap it up. I know this probably part is a part of it, but how you yourselves can help um, twofold, I would say donations and volunteering. Donations is... Um, the money doesn't come out of thin air, right? Just to just to be blunt about it. Um, most common expenses are um, application fees, which 
if, if you own your home, why would you know? But they're charging out there $35 to $100 per application fee. If you're a couple, it's not uncommon to charge double. So we're looking at $70 to $200 application fees. Commonplace in our housing market is um, you're submitting your application sight unseen. That's pretty common. So you're looking at a, uh, a website. You say, oh, I guess that looks nice. Here's a check. You show up to view it with 10 other people. I'm thinking of one place in mind right now. You show up with 12 other people. And one at the same time. You will, and you all paid your application fees for this, um, for this unit. And then um, one of you is chosen is selected and you know common barriers uh, what they're asking three times the rent so at 1100 um 1100 is common for a one bedroom unit that's 3300 dollars so that's roughly maybe like whoa, 20 20 21 dollars per month or, or per hour that you're that you're making minimum wage is maybe 10 or something like that um, 700 credit score, uh, minimum 650 credit score, um, no felonies, no evictions, no rent owed, the list goes on and on and on. Most people have probably at least one barrier, not to mention your deposit first, last, um, and deposit, pet fees, it all adds up. So again, the most common check that's cut is for application fees. Most people don't have 500 bucks to just toss toss around. Um, every once in a while, super rare, but we'll do the um, pay a deposit or a, or a first month or something like that. But again, the goal is to keep you in there. So that's the donation piece. Um, so be generous. Um, the other part is volunteering. The walk-in center does need to be staffed. Um, beautiful women who are very concerned. Most recently, they advocated for um, collaboration with the food bank to provide nutritious snacks for all families coming in. Um, you can imagine what situation you might be in um, coming in there um, to be able to have uh, some raisins and uh, some applesauce for your kids that are with blankets, this type of thing as well. Um, the hours are 10 to 2, and most people are like once a week all the way. We have people who come in once a month, so that's Monday through Friday. Please consider um, giving your time as well, and um, that's my portion. Uh, are there any questions? Where's the walk-in? Is it at the Metal Arc? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. over by the, the Good Boots. Right, I've been there, uh, but I just didn't realize that they called it that. So how do they know to just walk in that door? How do people yeah. get out there? So the prevention program is not largely announced only because word spreads very quickly. We just reopened the prevention program again less than six months ago, and I was at capacity immediately and uh, there's never a shortage of work um people will find out people will find out it's a great service we're one of very few people that have funding for for families as well which again is not announced but we're does get out so and does that funding come from the Y or from MIC? Or? Yeah, um, a portion of it is from the Y, a portion of it is from grants. It's not None of it is from the Y. Okay, so mm -hmm. grants, private donations, such as you ladies today, if you feel so inclined. Mm -hmm. And there is a third, two grants and private donations. Mm -hmm. And like congregations that have supported. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Yeah, it actually, so we started doing prevention because we got a family promise grant. Mm -hmm. And so that's how we started um, the prevention program. And in the whole kind of scheme of like, what a healthy housing program looks like is that you do have prevention. So preventing people from actually going into the family housing center, having a really robust like housing um, support. So family housing center and then stabilization. So that's why Family Promise is considered stabilization 
as another piece. And it really is because if we're to look at having a really good, like healthy housing supportive program, we have to have all of those components. Mm -hmm. So, and, and just to add an, um, an addendum to that, once the family is housed, um, I see uh, con contact or communication, like that's the end of the job. It is finished. The job has been done. Um, the stabilization program is absolutely vital to continue that relationship, continue that success. So whereas right now I might send a text or call, hey, how's it going? Because I'm curious, like, did it, did it work? Because um, the, the stabilization aspect would be to be that person and eventually have that relationship follow through with the, with the bank accounts, with the with homework, with the budgeting, mm -hmm. make sure, make sure you're really set. Mm -hmm. I just don't have the capacity to do that. Oh, mm -hmm. Yeah. You're too much. Yeah. Does so, he get the grants or apply for grants? Or I do, yeah. yeah. I do it with, and we have a grant writer too that helps with that. So I do know some numbers. It's like from last July, I think there was 30 families that were worked with, mm -hmm. right? 30 families that were diverted mm -hmm. and then five went into the family housing center. Mm -hmm. um, so that's like a very yeah. successful, I mean, so like Lakeitha said, it's very intensive. Mm -hmm. So she can't work with like, you know, 20 families at once, but the five families that she's working with, it has been very successful. Mm -hmm. And when we look at the family housing center, I mean, recently it was like bursting at the seams. Yeah, and so not still. having, and, yeah. and now, mm -hmm. um, so not having all of those families that are, um, that could be prevented from going in there. It's like, I mean, we would, um, at one point I was staffing the walk-in room when we started doing it with the Housing Advocate Network. And literally I was talking to people and saying, ooh, you're not, like yeah. you, you're still housed. You're going to be homeless in 10 days. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to come back then because mm -hmm. you're not technically eligible, right? Oh, right, right. Um, and so now we're able to meet with those families and say, okay, let's see if we can help you stay yeah. there. We don't want you to have to pack up all your stuff yes. and throw away it all. And like, right. Yeah. Right. And there's tremendous support from the community. We we love we love as humans an underdog story and that's kind of what we're doing. But the beauty of it and um, the beauty of what you guys are doing as well is that we get to participate in someone's thriving mm -hmm. in real time in real time. And it's the kids. I don't know where your heart. I mean, it's the kids for me. Yeah, and you get to see them running around and doing their thing and being health, healthy. Um, and it's quite amazing, actually. If I was a prior, I would buy that. Um, that's, so that's, really, that, that's why I can't do that kind of work. I just do something, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. It needs to be something strong, <laughs> it is, it is, and and yeah, so often I'm, I'm the rock for sure, for sure. Which isn't saying anything bad about you, but it's, no. you know, it's a good character to have because you help these people. Yeah, like they're sister. Sister. I mean, like, <laughs> So how do you know when to grab them out? Their house. <laughs> That's it. Their house. Yeah. That's it. Um, and they also uh, receive a welcome basket. So usually, um, I don't know how much of a part of my job it is, but usually I'll just ensure the welcome basket, the, the furniture happens. If I can enlist a walk-in person, I probably will just so it's off my plate, but um, I like to, I like to see it. We have connections with YBGR that has CSCT and any real specialists in uh, many of the schools. So I, I do like to see, uh, um, if I like to call it a soda, I can see it soda. What happens if it's just not working? Mm -hmm. Who would it come and change that? Yeah, that, that does happen. This is client-led. So, um, yeah, sometimes people don't meet, um, which is why I'm very clear up front before we do the end thing, what the expectations are. Um, I will say this, at no point, A, do I want to feel like I failed somebody 
and B, um, that the that the program itself um, has has been compromised. So that conversation will take place before the intake. Things happen. Um, so yeah, I, I have had people who a um, sees communication or whatever. I, that's there's nothing I can do, and I don't have feelings toward it because like life happens. Um, I don't have judgment toward that. Um, and B, um, I had one person in the six months go into the why. And when I tell you, it was like a full on, all the way up, I, I won't name names, but people high up uh, in city government were advocating for this person and we just couldn't make it. We just couldn't make it work. And so for that, um, I want to make sure that the integrity of the program is not compromised. And I, I do that. I also want to make sure I'm laying, I, I'm going to sleep at night, making sure I did my best. Um, so with that said, when it's unsuccessful, um, it just is. It just is. It's been exhausting, all that is. No, I have my, I love, yeah, you're particularly one. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Keitha, did you say what your background is? Yes, um, I've been a social worker in Missoula for 15 years. I've been in some type of management um, for the past 12 years. Um, I have a strong history in group home management. Mm -hmm. I prefer working with um, teenagers with severe emotional disturbances, meaning you want to punch me in the face with no consequences and can. And my job is to get you to not do so and to support a staff um, that has the tools to react appropriately and to um, um, mediate um, volatile situations. So my heart um, always and forever has been with the kids. I went into foster care when I was 16. What I didn't know, I had the most amazing experience. I had amazing foster parents and I had um, amazing experiences. And with group homes, what I learned later, years later, was that there was somebody who favored me in my community. I was pretty high up in DCFS and they were ensuring that I was going to just like the premium um, group homes. Um, and so this is me returning that favor. Um, no life, no experience is ever wasted, and this is me demonstrating that in my profession. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, but you as well, somebody has helped you along the way, each of you. Um, and so I again I implore you to think about who's helped you along the way to get you to where you're going and filter that into family promise or the reason why I'm here, the prevention program. Uh -huh. Can I ask you I'm just I heard you say at one point that there was a community email. Is there one that find for me? Brain, I'm so glad that you asked. Um, every month, the first Tuesday, or excuse second. me, first, second, second, second Friday. Friday. Watch that. Okay. Well, no, Starting over. The second Friday of each month at um, MIC, Missoula Interfaith Collaborative, 2205 34th Street, um, just outside of Brooks Clearwater Credit Union. Um, 3.30 to 5 p.m. we have a community meal. Ideally, we're not talking shop, so I don't introduce myself as Lakeitha. I'm the yada yada. I'm just Lakeitha, and um, I'm a part of this MIC community. I want to talk about your dogs. I want to talk about your grandma. Um, I want to share a piece of pie with you and that's the encouragement it's actually this friday and um i would love for you guys to come if i didn't say it we attempt to not talk shop we're really just um it's if you will yeah. vibing yeah it's a vibe um and there's mm -hmm. games most recently somebody brought scrabble mm -hmm. i'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm, I'll be at that table. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Actually, the 2023 International Scrabble Champion in my home. <laughs> oh, oh, oh my God. God. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty incredible. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is it a pop? She lives by herself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
Oh, um, it is. It's formerly the hot love, but what we found was that we have so much food to take home. Um, people were so. So what it is is, if you would like to bring your famous apple pie or 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 your custard, you know, or your uh, honey barbecue wings that you're famous for in your home, um, please bring it. You know, uh, be be a part of this community. Um, show up and smile. Mm -hmm. So, um, any more questions? Okay, I have cards. There's one for you. Thank you very much. This is yeah. very, very interesting. Important. The reason I asked you about the walking because when you walk in, there's a family center. I know that. And the other side is the secure, and you just have that one. Where, what room do you be in to meet these people? So there, right the one. there's a one for um, pathways, and then there's one for the family housing center. So mm -hmm. typically, like, oh, yeah, oh, okay. yeah, yeah, typically people go to the front desk, and then they tell them which room to go okay. in based on what they say. Okay. Yeah. So that's what I got. Oh, um, you have my um, email. If you have any further questions. Um, I am certainly available, you know, and um, I'll see you guys on Friday again. Um, donations and volunteering is a way to contribute. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.